everyone. Rose here. I started filming this hat and I realized I deleted it somewhere along the way. So it's about almost four o'clock. I should not be drinking the cappuccino, but we're making a nice cozy hat, even though it's like 70 degrees here. This is my thing since coming back from Italy as I, I have to have like a little saucer in it. All right, so what we're gonna do, I mean, what you're gonna need is some yarn. I'm gonna use white. This is that, what is it, the, like the go-go, you know, when it's in a, a round thing like this and you snip it. Um, got that. And you're gonna need some snippers and a tapestry. And we're gonna do the 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. So once you go get those supplies, I'll meet you right back here for a quick and easy, fast winter hat. Okay, I went to go get it so I can show you. This is the first one I made. This measures about 18 inches. Uh, no, my bad. It's it's about 16 inches, you know, but this, when you sew this down, it takes off a couple inches and it's a little big. I still fold it. Um, and it's, it's completely fine because even though it's uh, on your head um, and this is like boochy like that, you can, when you have it on your head, you can like stretch it down and then it makes these little rumples and it looks really good. That doesn't look good but it looks good on your head. And I wear this, I've been wearing this one a lot. All right, so go get your cappuccino or coffee or whatever you'd like to drink. And let's whip up a nice hat. All right, so we're gonna start with a slip knot. And as you guys know, I do the pretzel it looks like a pretzel. All right, this is just our base row. So this is another great one that we're not gonna have to really worry about counting too much. And we're just going to start our foundation starting row. So we're gonna yarn over and pull it through your loop. You just made your first chain. And we're just going to repeat that. Just keep grabbing your yarn, pulling it through, and we're just going to keep going. Don't worry about the stitch count. This one, it doesn't matter if it is a even number or an odd number. We're going for a measurement. I also have another little DIY project I'm thinking about. I'm going to put together for my coworkers. Um, it's not my idea, um, and I can't remember who it was, but it was on TikTok. All right, let's see where we're at because this looks really long. I might have went overboard here. Okay, so I'm just going to lightly stretch it out. I probably didn't mention you need some form of measuring. And I'm just going to start right at my little knot. And just going to wipe it down like this. All right, so that's already too much because I'm at like 20 inches. So I think I'll just... Hold it down where I want it. And I guess I'm going to go with 15 inches. Mine is, my chain row is 15 inches. Okay. And just for kicks and giggles, let's go ahead and count it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 
26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42. Mine is at 44 chains. This right here, what we're building, is going to be the length of your hat. So your forehead is going to be here, and then this is going to be the top of the hat. Okay, that's how we're going to build it. I'm excited. Let's get this going. Uh, we don't need to chain one because we're... You can if you want, but it, it doesn't matter if you do or you don't. Okay, so I have 44 chains. Every now and again, I'm going to count my rows to make sure that I'm still staying on track. Now, in this first chain, and sorry about my nails, I'm not sure if I like them or not, um, and they're, they're very bright. Um, here's the first chain, and I've gotten questions about this that they literally didn't know what chain is what. This one that's on our hook, that one is nothing. It's just holding this. It's it's ready to do something. This is the first chain, and that supports our working yarn. And this is our working yarn, and it's holding it. Um, now, this is the first chain, and now this is the second chain. And we're going to just yarn over go into that chain, pull up your yarn, and you've got your three loops, and we're going to make a half double crochet, so you're going to yarn over, I'm moving my hand up to hold it, and I'm just going to pull it through, half double crochet, got three, now you're going to find your next stitch, which is here, Gonna yarn over, go into that stitch, pull up your yarn, yarn over, and go through. You've just made two half double crochets. I'm going in these top loops, two lines down here. We're just gonna do one half double crochet in each stitch across the whole row. And since I had 44 stitches, I should have 43 when I'm done. And just take your time. This first row is always a little fiddly because we don't have a lot of project to hold on to. And I'll meet you at the end. I'm still just like an aftershock of coming back from Italy. I tried to like vlog when we were in Venice and I, I don't know, I looked, I felt so weird. Um, I need to get over it because there was so, oh my word, there was just, it's such, it's so beautiful. Italy is so beautiful. It's, it's basically like my second home, even though I'm Hungarian. So I'm going to have to get over it so that I can, um, vlog and show everybody the fun stuff you know we learned so much my word we learned so much about flying um, I am thinking about starting another channel so that I'm not like turning this into mishmash because um, I am exercising again and want to be able to do vlogs and stuff because I've been actually doing some vlogs just for my own therapy instead of journaling. I sometimes vlog to myself so I can hear what I sound like, like especially if I'm trying to sort something out, like if I'm having a problem or something or if I'm trying to remember something. Okay, last stitch. Half double crochet. Okay. Now, and now 
we're going to chain one and then we're going to flip our project. Now from this row on, all of our stitches are going to be in the back, in the back loop. So here we are, we normally look at it like this. We're just going to tilt it up toward the ceiling. Again, here's our working yarn on our hook. There's that first chain that holds the yarn. And here's our second chain. And now we're going to do double crochets on this row into the back loop. So we're going to yarn over, go into the back loop. Grab your yarn and pull it up. Now we've got three loops and on a double crochet, double meaning two, we're going to yarn over, go through two. It's hard to do this and look in the monitor. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to go through two. And then we're going to yarn over again and go through two. Double crochet. Now we're going to identify our next chain. We're going to yarn over, go into the back loop, pull up your yarn. We've got your three loops. Now we're going to do a double. We're going to yarn over, pull through two. Notice I'm adjusting my other hand to, to keep control of these loops. Yarn over and pull through two. Okay, let's do one more together. Here's my next chain. I'm gonna yarn over, go to the back loop, pull up, get my fingers up there, yarn over, go through two, Yarn over, go through two. Double crochet, two. And now we're just gonna do that all the way down. Just remember the back loop, the back loop. Now I know it looks like it's all stretchy and loosey-goosey, but it, it tames down as the project grows. I mean, you can even see it already. This is a little loose and then it's, it settles down. And just try to keep your hand loose. It's that, that's a hard concept when you're still a beginner. And even though they, they told me to do that, I, I really couldn't do it because I, it just takes experience and time. Have any of you set any like goals or um, I dare say <laughs> resolutions? I'm not really setting any. Um, the exercising is just one. I I miss weight training. You know, I'm I'm a woman in her fifties. I've got all the things going on with the. You know. Menopause, and all that stuff. Even though I've had a hysterectomy, you know, I still have the symptoms of it. And I. You know, I, I work hard um, and I'm not very good at asking for help. I will if I really need to. Um, I am a lot better about it, but I need my muscle tone. I don't want to be in a wheelchair. So um, I do cardio just for getting my body moving, but it's really in the strength training that's gonna, is where the gold's at. And I would love to start another channel just so I can teach what I know. Form is everything. And I'm still kind of back into the beginning stage of re-figuring out my form and everything. So uh, it would probably be a good time for people to jump in. Most of the comments were they didn't care if I talked. So, um, matter of fact, nobody said that they didn't want me to, but 
I don't want to just assume everybody is okay with it. That's why I'm talking. <laughs> All right, here we go. Second row. And if you can see it, it's probably still too soon. You could probably see it in person. When you tilt it down, you've got a little ledge, which is that front loop. And it just really gives, uh, whoops, oh, here it is. It really gives that ouch, texture. Those are all those front loops. And it makes it look so cool. Almost looks like a braided look. Love it. All right, so we chained one and we turn. Now this row I am going to count. And we're doing our repeat now. And now we're going to go back to our first half double crochet. I'm going to tilt it toward me. The chain one does not count. Okay, it's just to get us around. So here's my chain one. And this is the last double crochet. Now we're going to do a half double crochet into the back loop. Okay, there's one. Now I'm going to count mine and do to make sure that I have 43 stitches all the way across. So just do one half double crochet in the back loop and I'll meet you at the end. 42 and that last stitch, I have to bring it back to you because it likes to curve over and hide away. And 43. Okay, it's looking good. It's looking good. All right, so let's chain one, turn our work. And now finish the second part of that two row repeat. And we're going to do a double crochet back loop over all the way down. And you're going to do this until you have, uh, you know, like I said, your forehead's going to be here. So this needs to go all the way around the circumference of your head. That's how long we're going to build this part here. And when I get closer to mine or when mine is done, I'll come back and tell you how many rows I have and finish it up. I'll meet you back. All right, I'm back. All right, and if yours is a little wonky and whatever, it's fine. We're gonna just lightly pat it out and get it all straightened out. I did 33 rows. And from my forehead to the base of my head, it fits like the way I like it, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is, doesn't matter which way you fold it, and we're gonna start sewing it together. Okay, and it doesn't matter if you end it on a half double crochet or a double crochet, but I did do that. I finished on a double crochet and I started on the half double crochet so that I'm still doing my half double, half double. And then what you're going to do is you're going to chain one and you're going to fasten off and cut yourself from your fingers to your shoulder length of yarn. It's way more than we need. I know mine's way more than I need. And then you're going to get your tapestry and you're going to string that up. Coffee break. And let's see, how do I want to do this? All right. Okay, 
So here is my chain one right here. So this is my stitch. So I'm gonna still I'm gonna go in that back loop. And since this is our foundation row, I'm just picking up a loop. Not gonna matter. Let's just pull that through. Okay. And now I'm gonna bring it back over to me. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna line it up a little bit. I'm not worried about this end because we can like fix things as we go. Now I'm gonna find my next stitch and I'm just gonna poke it through the, the back. I've got this lined up, so I'm just gonna go through. I'm not worried exactly if it's completely lined up. I'm just trying to make a straight line back and sometimes it's in the right stitch and sometimes it's not. Okay, now let's get over here. I'm just gonna, again, I'm gonna lightly bend it and pull it up to, toward the ceiling so I can look at it. Go on my next stitch, push it straight back. And I'm not pulling it tight yet. I'm just kind of pulling it too. Next one. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna just line up another section and I'm gonna keep going. Pick it up here in a second. And I'm going in that back loop on this side. It's gonna keep us still having that ridge look that we want so you can't really even see where we joined. So it won't matter which way the hat is on. Okay, again, set myself up again. Where am I at? Here we go. I tried filming um, I groom a little bit at home. I have some clients that I've been doing. I mean, I've been taking care of their dogs. Get my next section. I mean, a lot of them since they were puppies. And a lot of them are old. And I'm just very, very protective over them. Um, some of them did follow me out to Rovers. And then they, I brought them back here. And so I, you know, got the whole setup. I've got all, all the professional products. There's no, you know, chintzing anything. And I, anyway, I tried to film yesterday and, oh my, I mean, what a train wreck that was. It was so funny. Because <laughs> um, I I know a lot of you have been asking me about it and um, I want to do it. I don't have a lot of clients here and I couldn't do it at my other job. But, I mean, surely there's a few nuggets in there I could, I could share. And now that I'm getting, I'm a little bit more than halfway, I'm keeping an eye. So I've got that lined up gently. And I'm just going to run my fingers so that I'm still keeping this. Because if, if this one was way over, then I would need to maybe do two stitches in one. And what I mean is like, I'm gonna go in this back loop and go straight. But if this side was, if this side was still too bulky, I would go right back into the one I just did and then go into the next stitch so that it starts shrinking this side. I mean, there's always a, a fix. I don't know them all, but I've made that mistake of not lining it up right, probably talking or something. <laughs> okay. 
which is really funny because I don't talk a lot at work. But that's different, I, I think. I'm okay with uh, silence at work, but I do have coworkers that do not like that. So I try to entertain when I can with whatever, you know, my quirkiness. But sometimes when it comes down to it, I'm just like, I need to focus and get things done. All right, it's looking good. Like I said, I'm still not pulling this tight. Just pulling it too. And if your yarn gets tangled, just let it go and it'll untangle. Now make sure that stays lined. Go back into that last stitch again and go over. I'm going to go back in it again. And I'm going to go over, but this time before it goes all the way through, I'm going to let it go down and then I'm going to bring my needle back through it so I can make a little knot. Okay. Oh, uh, why not? Let's do one more knot. You guys wouldn't know me if I didn't, wasn't a little overkill. Okay, snip off a finger's length. And I know it looks a little bit like a train wreck. It's okay. It is okay. Now, I think I like, now you need to decide which, which side do you like that you want on your forehead. I think I'm gonna do this side. So, this side. All right, let's get another piece of yarn. And basically we just want, mm, let's see, how tall is this? Again, this one is from my fingertips to my shoulder or armpit. Okay, now, yes, I spilled chocolate on it. I don't know when, where, how, who knows. You didn't see that. Okay, here's that tail that we started with. Now, because we don't want a big, you could have a big bunchy bit, but I don't wanna do that because I may put on a pom-pom. So I'm just picking up, I mean, if you look at your thing, and I'm basically just trying to get as close to the top as, po as possible. So I'm, that's like the last row no rhyme or reason okay first i'm just going to pull it in and with the tail that i had from the beginning i'm going to make a little knot oh why not let's do three knots okay now i don't have to worry about that now we're just going to be weaving in and out so i'm just going to pick randomly anywhere and I like doing it kind of close together it it cinches up better if you do that now you can do it this way or okay so I'm gonna go down and up down and up down and up pull it a little bit I'm not gonna pull it tight yet down and up. And if you have a gap like that, I'm just going to pick up through the top. Down and up. Down and up. Okay. 
turn my work. Okay, picking another random spot. It's down and up. And that's what we're going to do all the way around. I'm just keeping those down and ups close. And down and up. I'm just trying to catch some yarn. Yeah. And if I have a big gap, I'm just going to try and split through. Oh, I'm back at the beginning. Look at that. Now, the fun part. Take my needle off for a minute. I'm going to start cinching it. And if it's not coming, like, there's too much, you can just keep on, just move it around. Keep moving it. Okay. And uh oh. Oh, there it is. I was like, uh oh. Okay. I'm gonna pull that as tight as I can. I mean and then I'm gonna still grab those other tails and make another knot just to hold me. This really probably isn't necessary. <laughs> okay. And now all we're gonna do is thread it through the other side. thread them all at the same time. So there's one, move it down. Okay. And just gonna punch it through the top. Let's turn it inside out for a second. Just tie off some more knots. Like really? That's I did four knots there. Okay. And snip. I think we have time to do uh, something else you could do if you want. I'm not going to because I am going to fold mine up, but we could do a trim on this if you didn't like that edge. Well, shit, why not? Let's just do it real quick. That'll be fun. Okay, let's start with the slip knot. And let's just of that tail, I'm just gonna go in there. You can just tie on your yarn too. We're not doing anything fancy. Tie it on and that would be the tie on. And now we're gonna chain one, go into the next spot wherever you want, single crochet, chain one. You pick whatever random spot you want. Chain one. I'm going to skip a little bit. I think I've gone over this kind of stuff. Um, so we're not going to dawdle. We're just going to quickly go around. I'm just trying to grab some loops. Taking my tails with me. And make sure that I'm not just going in holes. All right, and I will meet you at the end. Single crochet, chain one. 
Don't add too many. You know, kind of spread them out a little bit. Okay, and I'll meet you when I get around. Okay, I'm back at the beginning and I'm just gonna go over to that first single crochet and I'm gonna do a slip stitch, chain two, finger, and push it down. All right, so these ends in real quick. And then I think we'll go ahead and do a pom pom. Why not? I've got I've got some yarn still. I guess I should try it on, huh? Love it. All right. So what did it end up being me measuring? Okay, so yeah, it's 14 inches. Um, and I think we started with 15 inches. All right. Let's do some pom-poms. Let's see, what do you want to use? What do you want to use? I'm going to just use my hand. Um, and let's see, how big do I want it to be? I think the size of my, I think the pom-pom to -pom be the size of my palm is fine. So I'm just going to take it. And you probably need to wrap it at least 100 times. It needs to be, if you don't wrap it enough, it's very sad looking. So let's go around a hundred times and see where we're at. I'm not gonna do this on camera, you, you, get, you get the point. Okay, that's a hundred. I don't think that's enough. Let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 18, 19, 20. Okay, here's 120. Doesn't look like it, huh? All right, so I'm gonna keep my hand in it. This is like the laziest way to do it. And I should have cut this part first, but that's fine. And then I'm gonna take like 15 inches. No, I'm gonna go longer, like 20, two feet about two feet because I'm going to be sewing this in. Now I'm going to carefully take it off, but I'm stretching it that way so that I can still, I'm going to lay it on there. Okay, I'll wrap it over. I want it to be in the middle. Get it not started. Okay, I just got a little knot started. And before I pull it too tight, I make sure it's where I want it to be. And that looks good to me. So now I'm going to tighten it carefully. Let's flip it over. Okay, now let's put our palm down on it to hold it down. And then we're gonna do a different knot. I, I don't know what it's called, but like you do a square knot where you would go under there once, right? Go under there again. So you go over it twice and then pull it. And when you do that, it holds. Now, if you can do that on your first time, you know, the other side, great, but I like to, I like to make sure I'm where I want to be before I do that. And then I'm going to just flip it again. And I'm going to do that again. Do it two times under. And okay, that should, that should do it, like really. And then a couple more knots. How do you like the YOLO style? We're just improving. All right, I'm gonna get some big old scissors. I got these at Tuesday morning, like years ago. I think they're fabric scissors, but you know, I'm gonna 
dog groomer, so I like scissors. Now, this is the messy part. Let's see if I can show you. And what we're going to do, I've got this part tight, is in between here, where it's folded over, we're just going to cut a straight line all the way around. And I'm going to keep this tight in my hand. And I'm going to have to do it in sections. I'm trying to get under all those loops. Don't rush this part. It's so easy to miss. Then I'm going to bang it around in the trash. Oh, my fingers. Okay. Okay. Now, look at that hot mess. <laughs> okay. Now, what do I want to do is I'm going to flatten it like where the string is. I'm going to carefully keep an eye on that thing because I'm just going to flatten it like a circle. Okay. And then I'm going to try and trim a circle. I want to hold my scissors like I do my grooming shears and it doesn't work. <laughs> How's yours turning out? <laughs> like, oh my goodness. I promise I can I can scissor in the round, but <laughs> Okay, let's get you back up here. All right, let's see what this looks like. Let me shake it out again. Okay, so that looks a lot better. It's kind of flat on the bottom a little bit. And, you know, I can always just take a look at it. All right, I'm, I'm happy with that. So, let's get our tapestry again. And we're going to just take one of the strands. Okay, I'm going to stick my hand in here. Now, looking at the top, um, here's the hole. And here's that round circle that we cinched in. I'm going to pick on that cinched part. I'm going to go down on one side of that cinched part. Okay. And then I'm going to bring the other strand on the other side. So they're like right across from each other. That way I'm definitely grabbing different sections. So I have something to tie. Stick my hand in there again. All right. All right, so I went there. Here's that center. Now I'm gonna go across. And I'm grabbing the needle. Let's get this inside. Okay. All right, now I've got it on two sides of that cinch. And now I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna do that knot again. The not the square knot, but the double square knot. Grab it twice. And then I'm going to tighten it down. And it stays. It's just like, what? Love it. Okay, and then I'm just going to tie me some multiple knots. I mean, you know, if 
I just tied that one extra knot, it's on there for good. And let's take this extra bit off. And then I'm just going to weave these in a little bit, just for a little bit of overkill. You should check to see where your palm is to make sure it's where you want, but I kind of like the surprise of it. Sometimes I'm like, oh, it's perfect. And then sometimes I'm like, whoops, I've had to cut them off before and redo it. But I know anybody that's following me, they're not following me because I'm perfect. All right. Oh, mm -hmm -hmm. look at that. You just, when you put it on, it's just going to be this little scrunchy bunch. Love it. I know it doesn't look great right here, but it looks better in person. And then if I need to, I can trim it more, but I kind of like it like that. I like my palms to be weird and not perfect. It makes it feel really um, homemade to me. Okay. I'm really glad we did that trim. That looks really nice. I may do it on my green one. This is a fast, great winter hat. Whips up really fast. All right, you guys, I'm going to go do this DIY real quick too for Valentine's Day. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much and have a great week. I just tried to click the mouse to turn off the video. <laughs>